Okay, so welcome back. This is part five in our series where we show you how to convert your Arduino into an oscilloscope. And here's the application we're going to develop. And uh, I encourage you to look at the previous videos in this series where we talk about the most important aspect of all this, which is planning and design. Uh, in the engineering world, you save yourself a lot of time and a lot of grief and a lot of confusion if you sit back and you start to think about first how are you going to plan it? How are you going to design it? What are the gotchas you have to be wary of when you're writing your code? And especially things like uh, equipment capabilities and limitations, especially when you're talking about an Arduino, which has some very specific limitations and capabilities that you need to be aware of. So I encourage you to look at the previous videos in this series where we go through all of that process and develop a block diagram, like a flow chart of what we're going to do. And we also talk about um, the timing, which is going to be very important. We develop a timing diagram to show how all this is going to work. You can see we've got this oscilloscope that updates very quickly. And you might think, well, how can I do that with a lowly Arduino? Well, it takes some thought. And we talk in the second video in the series how you can implement a high-speed USB interface here. And there are some other considerations we're going to need to consider uh, when we're developing our code and putting together our system. So again, I encourage you to look at those videos. And if you like any of these videos in this channel, I've got like 160, 170 videos. Please uh, like and subscribe, hit the bell notifications. And most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some more viewers. Really appreciate it. So anyway, here's the application we're going to develop. And in this video, we're going to talk about the Arduino. And we're going to write the code in the Arduino to allow it to communicate with our C-sharp application and give very fast updates and grab samples. You can see here I've got, um, as we talked about in the previous video, I've got two wires coming into the A0 analog input to the Arduino, and that's just coming from my function generator, my waveform generator. And it's, it's uh, grabbing all that data and it's sending it over the USB. And here's the result of the sine wave coming into my function generator. Uh, through the Arduino and I measure maximum and average volts and got some other features we talked about But what we're going to talk about here is The Arduino and these two controls right here these text boxes are very important when we're writing our Arduino code because they allow the user to tell the Arduino how many samples how many voltage samples to capture each scan and you can see here I've got a hundred millisecond scan or one tenth of a second. So it's scanning a hundred milliseconds and then refreshing and doing it again and again and again. You can see it's updating every fraction of a second. And that each scan represents 500 samples. Now I can change that. I can say, no, I only want a hundred samples per scan uh, or 200 samples. And we talked in the previous video how we determine what's a good number and what the limitations are of the Arduino and how many samples you can hold. So in this um, text box, we're going to allow the user to say, okay, Arduino only grab 500 samples each scan. Okay. So I've got 500, 500, 500, 500. Um, and that's going to be important when we write our Arduino sketch. The other one is the Arduino VREF. And again, we talked in the previous video what that is. It's basically what number the Arduino uses to convert the input value from 0 to 5 volts in the analog input to a 0 to 1023 10-bit 10 uh, digital number that it sends over the USB. So we're going to have to know what it used to convert the voltage into a 0 to 1023. And that's where we can, this text box is where we can input that value to make sure that we're using the same VREF that the Arduino was using. So these two values in these text boxes are going to be very important when we write our um, Arduino sketch. So let's take a look at the general um, design of this from the previous videos, and then we can go into the Arduino and start writing the sketch. So here is the block diagram, kind of the flow chart we developed in the previous videos. See, we got the Arduino and the computer, and the computer's got some tasks that we're going to have to write in C-sharp. And the Arduino has a very simple job. It basically reads the 0 to 5 volts in through the analog input. And it's going to convert that via the uh, AT Mega 328 
uh, analog digital converter inside that chip, and it's going to send out some values from 0 to 1023, and those values are going to be in an array inside the Arduino. So it's just going to go through those values and spit them out over the USB port to the computer so it can read that array that, uh, for example, 100 milliseconds worth of samples, and it can read it and it can plot it and it can do it again, and then you refresh the oscilloscope, read more data and replot it, and uh, that's the basic cycle we're going to use here. Now, in the previous videos, we also learned some lessons, and the, the ones that in yellow are the ones that are particularly important when we write our Arduino sketch. Um, the first thing was we had to look at the capabilities of the Arduino, and we talked about static RAM and the limited static RAM. And as a result, we decided, well, maybe all we're going to do when we measure is sample and transfer only the voltages and not worry about the timestamps associated with, with each voltage sample. So all we have to do is measure the voltages, send the array of voltages to the C-sharp application, and allow the C-sharp application to generate its own timestamps for each sample. So that will save us a lot of sending and a lot of array space on the Arduino so we can uh, have more samples and we don't use up the RAM. So that's going to be very important when we write our Arduino sketch. We also talked in the second video about using a high-speed USB, and we showed you how to do that. And we decided we we're going to use a baud rate of 2 million. And again, we showed you how to do that in the second video. I encourage you to take a look. Uh, we also talked about, in the previous videos, about using the serial.read string until and giving it a terminator uh, when it's reading that B100 request from the computer. Otherwise, it can you know, spend a second or so timing out, and it will slow down the entire process. So we're going to make sure when we write our Arduino sketch that we use this read string until when we're waiting for this B100 command. And the other thing is, uh, we talked about the VREF. It's very important in order to get accurate readings. Um, the Arduino is going to convert from 0 to 5 volts into 0 to 1023, and we need to know what that conversion number is, that VREF, so we're going to have to agree with the Arduino. So we're going to have to have some way to make sure that the C-sharp application and the Arduino are using the exact same VREF to convert those values, or else you're going to get wrong numbers. So these are the important things. Again, it's very important that you go through this planning so we can understand what the limitations are. Because honestly, if you mess up any of these things, you're going to run your C-sharp and the Arduino is going to freeze or... Your applications are going to freeze and you have no indication of what's going on. So very important that you um, go through this step. So let's go take a look at the Arduino sketch and see how we're going to implement all of this. Okay, so here's our Arduino sketch and there's really not much to it. Honestly, most of this is just documentation. I like to document my code so you can understand what's going on. And really, it's um, I'm just in the beginning, I'm just initializing some variables. And then I've got my void set up, and we showed in the other video how we can do a serial.begin with a value of 2 million for a high-speed port. And then the standard pin mode, analog pin, is going to be an input, and that's going to be this analog zero analog pin. And then we do a loop, and it's just going to wait for that B100 command or any other string that we might get from the computer. And we're going to see that we can have you know any string we want, any command string, and we can use this um, loop to determine what's the string and what to do depending on the different string. And then down here, I've just got a very simple um, method that we showed much of this in a previous video, where once we get a, com a command from the Arduino to grab a burst of data and send it back, that's what this little method is going to do. So let's take a look at what we got here. Um, again, the analog pin. A0, we're going to hook up our external signal to A0. And then I've just defined a string called the receive string, which is the B100 command we're going to get from the um, C sharp or whatever command we get. Um, we're defaulting to have a number of burst samples equals 500. Again, here we said the user can set the number of burst samples, but we're going to default it at 500 in case there is no um, change from the user, so it's just going to default at 500. And then here, um, I'm just defining an unsigned long called burst duration, 
in milliseconds. And again, it's going to receive that B100 command, and the 100 is going to specify how many milliseconds the burst should last. In this, just like we have here, we've got milliseconds, and it's a total burst duration of 100 milliseconds. All right, so we're receiving a command from the computer that says, give me this 100 milliseconds worth of data, and we want it to be 500 samples, okay? So um, I'm defining that number that we're going to get from the computer as burst duration milliseconds and defaulting it to zero. Now, very, very, very important, and another reason why you need to think about these things first. Um, I've defined this as a unsigned long, all right, in the Arduino, and it's just going to be milliseconds. So when you think about it, we're going to have in this application, um, for example, I've got a slider where I can set this from 0.05 up to one second of a uh, burst or scan duration. Here I've got 1,000 milliseconds of one second. So when you think about how many milliseconds is one second, it's only 1,000 milliseconds. So at most, we're going to get from the computer a number of um, zero to maybe 1,000, all right? So why do I need an unsigned long for this burst duration when it's only going to be like zero to 1,000? Well, in C sharp, an int, an integer, is default as a 32-bit value. But in the Arduino, it's 16-bit. So if I just define this as an int, it's going to define it as a 16-bit number. But if I get an int from the C-sharp application, it's going to be a 32-bit number. So right there, we're going to have a problem because I'm expecting in the Arduino a 16-bit number, but it's going to be 32 bits. So I'm going to get bad numbers, and this thing is just going to freeze. So again, you have to be very careful. One of the more difficult things I found with the Arduino is data types and conversion of data to make sure it's compatible with whatever, whatever application you're tying it into. Since there is this 32-bit number coming, um, we're going to have to pick a value in the Arduino that is equivalent to this 32-bit number. So what I'm doing is I'm using an unsigned long for my burst duration millisecond. We don't need to do that. Ideally, you could, in your C-sharp application, instead of using a big long int, you could use like a U-short which is only a 0 to 65,535 value, and that fits in better with um, our 0 to 1,000 milliseconds. But, you know, just in case we're going to use an int, I want to make sure I've got enough room because I don't want this thing to crash. And then this is just a description of what this application does, but it's really pretty straightforward. I've got my void setup, serial begin, 2 million. We talked about that before. Pin mode, analog pin, analog pin input. And then the void loop is very simple. We're just waiting for the PC to send a command telling the Arduino to return data. So it's sitting there and waiting for serial available to get some serial data coming in. So if we finally get data from the computer, the, we're setting the receive string as serial.read string until, and again, we talked in the previous video how important it is to not just do a read string, but re do a read string until and specify the terminator. Otherwise, this will sit there forever. So I'm getting the re receive string. In our case, it will look something like a B100 for a burst of 100 millisecond duration. And then I'm parsing this to find out what command I got. The computer can also give us a different type of string. So we're going to set it up so it's also got an S command. What is an S command? Well, it, that can tell you how many samples. Again, we've got the oscilloscope where the user can enter 500 samples, and we're going to default to 500 samples. But um, we can also, if we send an S command, it can change that from 500 to 100 or whatever. So if the receive string starts with S, then the number of burst samples is that receive string. We're taking the substring starting at character one, so it's going to be like S200 uh, if I want just 200 samples. It's going to start at character S and take the substring, convert that to an integer, and that's the number of burst samples we want to grab. So we can put any commands in here we want and just do an if and have a different command to, to get more different data. Otherwise, 
if the receive string starts with a B, which means, oh, okay, here's the command that says, I want a burst of data, and after the B is the number of milliseconds to grab, the burst duration milliseconds will be the receive string, the substring starting at character one, which is this B, it'll take the substring and we'll convert that to an int, so our burst duration milliseconds will be something like 100. And then once you got that, we're going to do our grab, burst, and send that we showed in the previous uh, video. So grab, burst, and send basically takes our unsigned int val, and it takes the number of burst samples that we're using. Either we got it from the command from the computer, or we use the default 500. And this is just the 0 to 1023 values we're going to get from reading the analog input. And again, these are two bytes for each unsigned int. So this is going to be an array of 500 values from 0 to 1023 each. And then we're going to calculate the delay in microseconds for each sample. Again, we said um, each sample takes a minimum of 0.1 milliseconds to do an analog read. If we're going to have a long scan, we're going to have to delay each sample so that it fits into whatever the user wants, like 100 milliseconds. We're going to have to delay the samples to make them all fit into the desired um, scan time. So I'm figuring out for each sample the burst sample delay in microseconds. So how do I do that? Well, we know the number of burst samples, and we know the total burst duration in milliseconds. So in our case, it might be 100 milliseconds. So first, we're going to convert that to microseconds by multiplying times 1,000. So it would be, for example, 100 milliseconds times 1,000 is 100,000 microseconds. And divide that by the number of burst samples. It would be 1,000 milliseconds per sample total. Subtract the 100 milliseconds that are required to do the analog read. And this just gives you the delay. So we've got 100 milliseconds per sample. Each sample takes 100 milliseconds to do with an analog read. And then we've got a 900 millisecond delay. So we talked about this in previous video. I encourage you to take a look at that. It explains this. But basically, it figures out how much delay per sample in microseconds. And once we've got that, we just go through and we grab each value from the analog pin and then apply whatever delay that is. So from i equals 0 to the number of birth samples, we fill the array of vowels with the analog read. And it's going to be a 0 to 1023. And we just go through for 100 or 500 or however many samples, fill that array. And for each sample, we delay whatever that burst sample delay is we calculated in microseconds. And we fill up that array. And then when we're done, we go through. And for the same array, we just serial.println the value back to the computer. All right? And then at the end, when we're all done with those 100 or 500 samples, we just do serialprintline.n to tell the computer, hey, we're all done with that burst. Uh, and now we're going to start waiting for the next request. So that's about it with our Arduino code. Very straightforward. So now keep in mind, we wrote this sketch assuming you have a stock Arduino Uno. And we mentioned some of the limitations. For example, the SRAM. Uh, we mentioned the speed of this analog read is 0.1 milliseconds per sample, which kind of limits um, how fast you can do a scan. Now, there are ways around both of these things. Uh, you can get more SRAM with a different model of Arduino. And this analog read, you can actually speed that up. It takes a little fancy coding. And we'll talk about both of those things in a, a future video where we talk about optimizing all of this. But just keep in mind, there are ways to uh, get around some of the um, limitations with the UNO. What we're going to do in the next video is start taking a look at the c -sharp code and how we're going to implement that. Anyway, I encourage you to look at the previous videos in the series. And hang in for the rest of the series where we write the C-sharp code and to develop this uh, application. Again, if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to like and subscribe. Hit the bell notification. And most of all, let others know that we're here so we get some more uh, viewers. Appreciate it. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.